Hello, Medipreneurs. Very excited today to be with Eric Miller, who's going to be providing one of the sessions on Saturday morning for people that want to get started as an entrepreneur. So Eric, thank you. Welcome. You're most welcome. I'm looking forward to coming back again as a, as a, was a legacy uh, attendee. Exactly. Uh, last year. Yeah. Very exciting. Trailblazer, an initial uh, Medipreneur. Ooh, <laughs> that's great. One of the many advantages of having Eric come and provide this session on Saturday morning is that he's had so many different experiences in his lifetime, starting with extensive military service, and then someone who started a number of different businesses from nonprofits to for profits. So Eric, give us a little bit of that background. Well, thanks, Michelle. But yes, um, I, uh, my father was career military, so we moved all over the place. So I got very used to being placed in different situations and having to figure out, so how do you move forward with conversation and all of that. And then uh, after my 22 years um, there, uh, retiring in 95, then that's where I started going out to try and be entrepreneurial. Uh, believe it or not, the first time around was uh, being a, an insurance agent, but I wasn't quite ready, but I understood it. It was successful. And then uh, went into two other not-for-profits and um, as a, essentially the CEO, executive director, so being entrepreneurial that way, because it's all about addressing change in the organization, particularly with, as everybody knows, for not-for-profits, you're relying on funding from outside sources. So how do you make this kind of work? Okay. Then when that was done, then I felt ready to uh, go ahead and then um, 2004 uh, found uh, Smart Performance Strategies, whose mission it is, is to move leaders forward, move the organization forward, which is in line with my personal value mission statement of helping others move forward. So if you are an entrepreneur, somebody thinking about getting started, or someplace in your business development where you want this kind of expertise, I think it's a beautiful thing that you're not a pharmacist, and you're bringing so such a huge wealth of information to us. So who should attend your session? Well, not this is true, not being a pharmacist, but uh, I do care. I am an associate adjunct at uh, Notre Dame University School of Pharmacy, and I still carry that uh, same title at uh, Campbell University School of Pharmacy. I said it only because I know enough to be dangerous uh, about the pharmacy profession, but I'm also a, a fan and very supportive of what pharmacists are trying to do, particularly in North Carolina, as I'm sure in other states how to get pharmacists to have provider status, to be on the same par with, you know, with the MDs uh, in the world. Because I always find it fascinating every time I go into a, a retail pharmacy, I always engage in the pharmacist. You know, where did you get your degree? What's going on? Do you like it? That kind of stuff. So, and of course, being very privileged to teach third year students, uh, thinking that, you know, I'm going to influence them as future leaders. And we're also teaching an entrepreneur course for those that think they want to be our entrepreneurs, and these are like second year and third year students, so it's fun trying to watch them wrap their brains around how, how do you do this. So, yes, those that uh, we would love to have at the seminar would be the ones that are thinking about, hey, I got this great idea, and those that are stuck, let's say. Uh, those would be, I think, ideal candidates because what we're going to try and do is sit there and say, okay, well, what is entrepreneurship? and define that and have, have the attendees define what they think entrepreneurship is. But we also wanna talk about entrepreneurship because one of the big differences between entrepreneur and entrepreneur is whose money are you using? Michelle, as you know, and as I've known for the last 15 years, I'm using my money, all right? Entrepreneurship, you use the organization's money. Both have interesting sets of risk. So that's one of the, uh, the elements there and then how is it so different from the traditional way of doing it? So that's how I started. We had to have the, you know, the big business plan. What we want to talk about is the lean approach that's being used in Silicon Valley. It's kind of spreading its way around. So it's moving in towards pharmacy now. What does lean startup mean in pharmacy? So the, tech, the techies in Silicon Valley have been doing it for years, but now we're seeing for businesses in general, how you use the lean process because lean means I can get my product out faster whereas traditional means I'm going to spend a lot of energy and money trying to get it all straightened out. 
The lean process is though, there's a way to get your product out a lot, a lot faster. But it's a hypo both are hypothesis. Which do you test to see if it's a good idea? Because otherwise it may still be a good idea only in here. And then we want to talk about some tools that help you operationalize the idea. So, so sorry, I didn't mean to cut you no, off. No, that's good. We're good. For those people that are um, nearing the starting gate or just out of the starting gate or even well into it, but like, oh, it's not going the way I want it. It sounds like any of those would get a lot from your session. And rather than this blank screen of where do you start, you're gonna help people figure out some specific steps that have been tried and true in Silicon Valley. We're gonna give, uh, everybody's gonna have uh, tools. And by the way, if, if everybody's expecting that I'm going to carry the load for uh, two hours chatting away, wrong. This is designed to make sure this is extremely interactive, which means we'll introduce the concepts of entrepreneur and entrepreneur. We'll talk about the differences between lean and traditional, but focus on what is the lean process. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna have some tools whereby every participant, whether you think you have an idea, or you have an idea, or you're stuck, you're gonna have the opportunity to sit there and take your idea and using other people in the room, validate that. Validate your process, make changes, pitch it again, make changes and then present to the group what did you learn what so it's all about getting an appreciation for the process it's not designed to make you an entrepreneur not enough time but it'll get you started on the right, start on the right path. and keep you from churning in the mud quite so long as you're in those early stages and also you'll feel that you were not alone because there's too many people have gone out and done it and done it real well we're going to talk specifically and those who can get it should get michael gerber's book the E-Myth or the E-Myth Revisited, because we're going to talk about the three roles. Had I read that book 15 years ago, I might have had a different startup. Okay. So, so it, there are three very distinct roles that, that entrepreneurs have to uh, reconcile, because you cannot do all three. There's no way to achieve balance in all three. You're only going to be good at one. Okay, so the E-Myth or the E-Myth Revisited will help I'm you convert. prepare for this session. Yeah, Michael Gerber. So, I mean, if you just read it, scan through it, you'll get, a, you'll get an idea of uh, what Michael, as he tells stories about what an entrepreneur is going through and how they get stuck. Some fatal assumptions in terms of, oh, if I'm the entrepreneur, then all this will come together. No, there's, there are two other characters, which I won't mention now, that uh, get involved in, uh, in this process. Okay, excellent. So we hope that, that many of you choose to go to this session, this workshop, this very interactive workshop. And just to remind everyone, the other two options on Saturday morning are one with Stephanie Ferrari that's going to be specific to people in a community pharmacy setting and how to really stretch the type of practice that you're able to offer in a community setting. And then Anna and Sue and I will have a session for those that feel like they're further along and how do we go and thrive and, and move our businesses even further ahead, even though they're being successful at the moment. So two weeks away, we can't wait to see everyone. Thank you, Eric. Any parting words for anyone as to why they need to come to Medis and pick your, your option? Sure. Well, if you don't pick my option, uh, it'll hurt my feelings. But aside from that, the uh, if you were there last year, uh, this information wasn't presented. I mean, it, was, it was the inaugural conference. We kind of talked about it. So this one is designed to be very hands-on practical, where you walk away with some tools. Say, oh, okay, if I do this, how do I get my idea uh, moving forward? That's one of the key differences. That's a great point, because we did. We all talked about that that was a huge piece missing last year, and you are going to provide that this year. So that's, that's, that's a compelling reason if you were here last year to come. If you were here last year, okay, but you're still thinking about the idea, then you should come and at least listen to what's being said, because not only will you gain some, uh, some insight, but you'll meet others who have gone out there and put their big toe in the water and either had it freeze, get too hot, but they've, they've had that experience that you don't have. And the whole idea there is to give you an appreciation. You're gonna to have to go walk it, but learn from others who've already walked it for a while, or, or you know, maybe just maybe a year or two or three into it. And so, so you don't reinvent the wheel. 
It's all about taking lessons learned from others who've gone and done and then apply it to your situation, to who you Perfect. are. Perfect. Great. Be there. Be there. Be there. Can't wait to see you soon. All right. Thank you, Michelle. Good luck, everybody. See you in two weeks.